it is O Dark 30. Uh, F350s loaded. Side by sides loaded on the back of the jumping jack. And we're getting ready to head out to Eastern Oregon. These guys here think we're jerks, for sure. Are you ready for this? Ready. 10 hours, 12 hours, 10, 11 hours, we'll be. a bit of a nuisance they're really great companions yeah so oh. 11 days eastern oregon 11 days dang let's get some hunting done yeah we're gonna well, there's a whole bunch of camp trailers up there <laughs> got us a cow on the first day yeah. That would have been crappy. I mean, I like beef and all, but I don't think I'm taking that one home.
form, good form. Day before season. A little late getting out of camp today, but look at that sunset over there. Sunrise. Sunrise. <laughs> Did I really say that? <laughs> okay, apparently we're not awake all the way. Breakfast cooking. Master Chef. No Master Chef. Yeah, oh, those look perfect. After scouting all day, all we came across were some does. My parents spotted a couple small ducks, but that was it. And then on our way back to camp, we spotted this little three point. Not much for deer activity. Opening morning. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, finally. And it's getting warm quick. Yes. It was cold this morning. It wasn't too bad, but it was pretty cold. But that sun is coming up quick and it's getting warm. But we thought we would come up here and kind of check some of these more covered ground area to see if we could uh, no spot fun. anything. They've taken a lot of the uh, juniper. The juniper out, and so we have a lot of a lot of areas we used to hunt is uh, open and bare. So we thought we'd try this out and see what we could find and kind of get an idea what kind of game plan we can get going. So far we've seen a few does yep. and lots of people. Lots of people. Lots of people. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, day one. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Let's get this party started. Maybe we'll see. We've heard a few gunshots this morning. Yep. So, seen a coyote this morning. Yeah. Cool ground, huh? Can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, let's head down the road a little ways to see if we can't find something. Oh, no, another and gunshot. there's another gunshot. Well, maybe we should stop videotaping and go shoot something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Decided we're going to take a little hike down here to see if we can uh, go catch the bottom of a couple of these draws where there are no roads going into and a creek. So, oh, that's real lovely. Let's just leave our diaper there. I mean, come on, guys. Definitely. 
work of art. I wouldn't shoot a fork and horn in there opening day. <laughs> <laughs> There's that one. Yep. Nice. They're going to move up into those trees, probably in bed. They're both forkies, I think. Not what you're going for, is it? They're both little forkies. 
Might be regretting it later if we don't. So we might be regretting it later if we don't. What do you think? Is that what you want? Okay, they're gonna go up over the ridge anyways. They're just gonna cut back to the left. Oh, they're just cutting back to the left up on the ridge. That one was a lot better, Forky. See them all? They're going to the left. If you come over here, you can see them. They don't like going through that rocky stuff. Today was a much better day for finding deer. We had ventured out to a different area and found a lot more deer activity than we had so far. So we decided that there was a certain spot we wanted to sit at right before dark just to see what else would pop up. We had sat at that location for some time, glassing the area, and about an hour and a half before dark, deer started popping up all around us including a little buck that was in this group. As soon as they put this spotter on it, I was like, oh yeah, that's a buck. That was a real big fork and he's way off the road. <laughs> Seventeen deer. Just right here. Definitely a bigger forky. Yeah. Bigger, so. yeah, I 
can't even get a range on. Hmm? I said I can't even get a range on. And then we spot this guy, a much bigger forked horn. Brian decides that he wants to go after this buck. So he's going to go down and see if he can cut the distance in about half. And I'm going to stay with the spotting scope and keep an eye on him. The sun is going down quick, so we've got to make this as fast as we can. Brian quickly grabs all of his stuff, leaving the walkie-talkie behind, and his phone's on the spotting scope recording. I try to reposition the spotting scope and I lose the buck. He is completely vanished. I can't find him anywhere. I spot Brian. But I can't give him any direction on where to go. I have no idea where that buck went. Brian heads off into a little draw where I can't see him anymore. Shortly after, I hear a gunshot. And then another. It has to be him. I scan around hoping to find any little bit of the action that I can, but I can't find anything until I spot what looks to be the big forked horn that we had originally spotted, but he doesn't look like he's injured. I'm at this point thinking that he missed. But then I hear Brian holler in success. So now I'm thinking either that wasn't the forked horn or he did actually hit him and I just couldn't tell. So now I'm super excited. Brian just got a buck and he has hollered at me to bring the side by side down. So this is where things get interesting. I knew that there was a road that cut back that was below us and I figured that's the road he meant for me to go on. I get down to that road and realize that that road is actually going to take me around the other side of the mountain. And that's not where I want to go. So I start heading back. Meanwhile, Brian is sprinting through the sagebrush trying to get my attention until he loses headlights and can't hear the side by side anymore. Now he is really worried that something may have happened to me and maybe I rolled the side by side and we still have no contact with each other and it is pitch dark outside. Meanwhile, I'm stressing because I know he's out there with nothing on him in the dark and we're almost already out of fuel. I finally catch him on the road where he wanted me to go about a hundred yards 
low where we had started at and we're both a little emotional but then I hear him say I just shot the biggest buck of my life and that's when the excitement set in and we were on our way to go back to see if we could locate where he left this buck at there guys well Huh? You heard the gunshot. You saw the forger horn. Brian completed the mission. Well, we'll turn back, no. However, he got himself one heck of a mule deer. And much to our surprise, it's a dandy. But now we are here in the dark with almost no fuel. Just worked your butts off to get him to the side by side. So now we're going to make our last leg and try to make it back to camp without running out of fuel. But holy crap, babe. Great job. There you go. Let's take a look at that. Unfortunately, we didn't get it on video. We didn't get much of the hunt on video. This would be about our what? 78th, 79th deer we've seen today. Three bucks, but nothing of this caliber. Very close. Yeah, Babe, you just killed your biggest buck. Yes, I did. Way to go. Yeah. Sorry for the fiasco. I might have had something to do with the lower amount of fuel that we have. I kind of got a little off for out and Way off. Brian had yeah. to come kind of chase me down. I tried to help. It didn't work. But hey, I'm so proud of you. That is beautiful. We don't even have game bags or anything with us. Man. I wonder if we could... <laughs> that is awesome. You get a photo. We head back to camp and we were so relieved to find another camp that was still awake at 10:30 that was able to loan us some fuel. <laughs> I was going after a big fork and I'm like, oh, that's a three point and shot got it over to oh, he, they they're hard to stuff in the back of side by side I with rode home stuff, with that tote in my lap the whole way when they look like that oh look at there yeah <laughs> good work for it huh drag them a little ways I, mean, uh, I went after a big forked horn, a huge forked horn. Nice. I says, they gotta be away from their he was probably vehicle. about like this. Well, we actually like um, even sent a him. text message to Craig yeah. thinking if anybody checked their cell phone, maybe Craig let him know, hey, we're, we're here, we got a buck him. down, like, like call it. us. Where is it? Where is it? And all of a sudden I saw and we're like, low fuel, we're heading from here. Oh, he's a good three. I'll take him. Drilled him. And I guess I didn't see it. It blew me off the tree that I was shooting at top of. I'd say that'll work. That's nice buck, yeah. Uh, not a, <laughs> it's a gorgeous <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's the strings, everything, trying to load him in the back. It was a bitch trying to get him in the He's back. He's got a big body. Oh, he is huge. <laughs> body wise. So what are you going to do with him tonight? Get him hung up. Where? So then we pull into the camp that we see lights on. We're like, okay, well, you know, let's get some, see if they can bum us some fuel so we can make sure we get back to camp. We're like, yeah, we got a monster buck. And he's like, yeah, we got one yesterday. And we already seen two bags hanging in their camp. And we're thinking like everybody else, you know, they're just little bucks. Yeah, yeah the, the buck he got was like a 33-inch wide buck, like pushing over 200 inches. Like, Ooh. oh, like, well, yeah. you just put our, like, oh, cool, congratulations. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice one. Look at that neck on him. He's, he's big. Yeah, he is stuffed in there. Yeah. We're two days in and one buck down. We've got five more tags and more video coming your way. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please go over and do that. Hit that bell so you get notified of when those videos get posted.